All right, we will reconvene the um, uh, September 17th, 2020 meeting of the Delaware County Board of Commissioners. Um, uh, I am Jeff Ben, president of the board. To the right is our vice president, Gary Merrill, and fellow commissioner, Barb Lewis, to the left. And uh, Jennifer Walraven, you're going to take it from here. Yeah. We'll open the hearing and then we'll go through the rules and then go from there. Resolution number 20 823 in the matter of reconvening hearing for consideration of the Pither number 377 drainage improvement petition. So moved. Second. Discussion. Vote. Vote on motion 20 823. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 20-824, in the matter of approving for a specific occurrence, a suspension of Rule 3, Speaker Registration, Rule 4, Limitations, and Rule 7, Public Comment Procedures from the Rules Governing Public Comment before the Board of County Commissioners of Delaware County, Ohio. So moved. Second. Discussion. Vote. Vote on motion 20-824. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Bonton? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Okay, we have opened the hearing. Uh, the first hearing on the Pither number 377 drainage improvement petition. Um, and I will go through the uh, process or the, the procedures today. I'd like to welcome everyone to the to the first hearing for the consideration of the Pither 377 drainage improvement uh, petition. Uh, for the health, safety, and well being of county residents in response to the continued threat of COVID 19 and in accordance with orders of the Ohio Director of Health, public participation in this hearing will be by virtual means. All participants of this Zoom meeting are currently muted. Correct. Okay. Please remain muted until the testimony portion of this hearing is open. We will give everyone an opportunity to speak for or against the project. I'll review next what we're going to happen, what's going to happen today. We'll first hear a report from the County Engineer in the Soil and Water Conservation District, take questions from the board. Those speaking for or against the petition must either be an owner as defined in section 6131.01 of the revised code or an attorney speaking on behalf of an owner. So please keep that in mind if you want to testify. Um, we will take testimony from the landowners. Unmuting each individual person or phone number is listed on the Zoom call. During testimony, you will be asked to take an oath. You are not required to testify, but you will be given an opportunity to. Um, when it's your turn, please identify yourself and state whether you are in favor or against the petition for our clarity. Um, again, for those of you who have been on previous Zoom calls, I can't overemphasize the need to remain muted while you're, if you're not testifying, because uh, the interference can be uh, very distracting. So uh, next, we'll take questions from the board. Then after listening to testimony and the report of the engineer, the board will decide whether to grant the prayer or petition or dismiss the petition. The board considers the following in our decision, whether the board hereby finds that the proposed improvement is necessary, that it will be conducive to the public welfare, and the board also finds that it is reasonably certain that the cost of the proposed improvement will be less than the benefit. If the board grants the prayer petition, the Delaware County Engineer will proceed with preparation of plans, reports, and individual schedules, schedules of assessments for the project. When plans are complete, a final hearing will be set, notification of the hearing will be given to landowners, and the board will consider the project. Um, we also have uh, in the hearing today our uh, staff attorney, uh, Eric Hostetler, who will be uh, available to answer uh, questions that are uh, of legal importance. So. With that, we will turn it over to, uh, let's see, Dan, you're gonna do the reading. Um, if you could just identify yourself for the record and, and proceed. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, Daniel Barr, Delaware Swan Water Conservation Districts, and I'll get us started by reading the first hearing report here. Uh, first hearing report, Pither number 377 watershed drainage petition for ORC 6131, September 17th, 2020. This report has been prepared for the preliminary hearing on the drainage improvement petition filed by Michelle M. Thomas on January 10th, 2020. The original petition has been signed by representatives of two of the 30 parcels in the watershed. The general location and course of the requested improvements are quoted from the petition as follows. In Delaware County, Harlem Township, within the Pither number 377 watershed and generally following but not limited to the course and termini of the existing improvements. The following is the nature of the work petition as quoted from the petition. To generally improve the drainage, both surface and subsurface, to a good and sufficient outlet by replacing, repairing, or altering the existing improvements as required 
and or creating new surface and subsurface drainage mains or laterals as requested by this petition. Petition process. This petition has been submitted according to section 6131 of the Ohio Revised Code, which authorizes the Board of Commissioners to act on behalf of the benefited property owners to make drainage improvements. If the Board of Commissioners decides to proceed with the project, the costs related to the improvements and the development of plans, reports, and schedules are assessed to the landowners in the watershed according to the benefit received to their watershed acreage. These special assessments will be added to proper taxes for each property and can be spread over a maximum of a 15 year period. Property owners may also choose to pay their assessment in a lump sum payment prior to placement on their property taxes. Additionally, the improvements will be placed on the Delaware County Drainage Maintenance Program in perpetuity per ORC section 6137, and the annual maintenance assessment will appear on property tax statements as a special assessment in the same manner as the construction assessments. These annual maintenance assessments are generally in the range of two to 3% of the construction assessment. It should be noted that property owners are only assessed for those improvements that are located downstream from their properties. No property is assessed for improvements located upstream. The public agencies that own rights of way for public roads and other public lands are also assessed for both construction and maintenance costs in the same manner as private property owners. The decision to approve a petition project is a three-step process. First, a viewing of the proposed improvement is conducted for the commissioners to familiarize themselves with the watershed and general conditions. The commissioners conducted the viewing for this project on March 16, 2020. Next, a preliminary hearing is held to consider the initial feasibility of the proposal. It is this preliminary first hearing that is before us today. If this petition is approved, a final hearing will be conducted to further consider this petition. At that time, final details such as engineering, plans and specifications, cost estimates, and a proposed schedule of assessments will be known. Existing conditions, the Delaware Soil Water Conservation District and Delaware County Engineer's Office have made the following observations of the watershed using on-site evaluation and a review of available historic records, aerial photography, topographic mapping, and soils mapping. The Pither number 377 watershed is approximately 122 acres. The predominant land uses within the watershed are agriculture and rural residential. There is also an industrial property as well as areas of woods and road right-of-way. Previous improvements in the watershed were constructed using ORC 6131 process in 1913. These improvements consisted of subsurface drain installation only. The drainage system does not appear to be functioning at or near optimum capacity due to a lack of comprehensive maintenance and the generally deteriorated condition of the infrastructure. The lack of uniform and maintained surface grading limits the efficiency of large flow events and places pressure on the subsurface drainage system. The subsurface drain system appears to have significant areas of structural failure as observed by sporadic blowouts along its course. These conditions are indicators of an overburdened and aged drainage infrastructure. While the existing drainage system still provides some degree of drainage benefit, it does not appear to function as a good and sufficient outlet. Estimate of cost, factors favorable, unfavorable, benefit versus cost. ORC 6131 requires a county engineer to state in a report factors favorable and unfavorable to a proposed project, estimate the cost of the project, and state an opinion as to whether the benefits of the project exceed the cost. The following information is presented for your consideration. Construction estimates. The project would begin at the upstream south end of Michelle Thomas's property and extend downstream to a good and sufficient outlet on the Karen and Jeff Hughes property. The primary items of work along the entire length would include open channel restoration, surface drain shaping and grading, the replacement of existing subsurface drains ranging in size from 8 inch to 15 inch in diameter, the installation of private drive culverts, <coughs> the construction of a grade stabilization structure, brush and vegetation removal, and seeding and mulching of disturbed areas. If the project proceeds to a final hearing, portions of the watershed may be further divided into sections to better define the areas of work and the associated costs and benefits. This level of detail is not determined for the preliminary hearing and is only undertaken if the petition moves forward to a second or final hearing. The cost estimate as presented below reflects the entire requested project area. Construction, $49,700. Drainage maintenance, ORC 6137, first year startup, at 5% of construction estimate, $2,485. Project administration, survey and engineering, 15% of construction estimate, $7,455 for a total project estimate of $59,640.
Note, it is important to understand that the above estimates are preliminary and made in the absence of a current detailed topographic survey of the project area. The above estimate does not contain a contingency amount. The amount of necessary contingency would be evaluated as part of the survey and engineering design of the project and added to the estimate presented at the final hearing. Contingency cost is typically estimated at 15 to 20% of a final construction estimate. Should the project fail to be approved at the final hearing, the benefiting landowners, as defined by ORC 6131, may still be responsible for the cost of the project administration, survey, and engineering design. Assessments. If the project moves forward to the second hearing, the Ohio Revised Code instructs the county engineer to calculate the assessments to individual property owners based on the benefits received from the improvements for the various properties in the watershed. ORC 6131 states that Uplands that have been removed from their natural state by deforestation, cultivation, artificial drainage, urban development, or other man-made causes shall be considered as benefited by an improvement required to dispose of the accelerated flow of water from the uplands. Benefits are further defined by the ORC as elimination or reduction of damage from flood, removal of water conditions that jeopardize public health, safety, or welfare, and increased value of land resulting from the improvement. Individual parcel assessments are not calculated for the preliminary hearing and are only calculated if the petition moves forward to a second or final hearing. Factors favorable, unfavorable. Factors favorable to the improvement. Improved surface and subsurface drainage in the watershed. Improved outlet for the subsurface drainage components of household sewage treatment systems and for residential drainage systems. Reduction of future deterioration of surface and subsurface drainage infrastructure annual inspections, maintenance, and protection of the improvement in perpetuity. Factors unfavorable to improvement. Temporary land use disruption during construction. Cost of construction and maintenance may be a burden to some landowners. And removal of existing trees and brush in improvement area. Benefits versus cost. Assessments for property within the watershed are calculated based on the benefits derived. A publication by the Ohio State University Extension titled Returns to Farm Drainage details several studies conducted by Ohio State researchers on the effects of drainage on crop yields. The studies show that fields with good drainage will produce higher yields than fields that have poor drainage. A recently completed 25-year study showed that subsurface drainage increased corn yields by 24 to 39% and increased soybean yields by 13 to 46%. The same study also analyzed the return on investment for installing subsurface drainage in a field. It found that for corn, $4 is returned for every $1 invested, and for soybeans, $3 is returned for every $1 invested. To state it generally, the benefits of drainage will equal the increased yield multiplied by the market price. The increased value or benefit for residential properties is much more subjective and difficult to quantify. For residential properties, the lack of an adequate drainage outlet can negatively impact the condition of household sewage treatment systems, potentially limiting the value of the home for resale. Should the existing system fail, the cost to perform repairs or construct an alternate sewage treatment system can range from the thousands to tens of thousands of dollars. It would also be reasonable to consider the cost of environmental degradation due to residential sewage treatment systems that may not be functioning properly. Other benefits that are commonly perceived as a result of drainage improvements focus on quality of life and positive neighborhood perception. Communities that have planned and maintained stormwater drainage infrastructures generally have higher resale values than those communities that are known to have a history of drainage problems or flooding. Conclusions. Based on all the information gathered and generated for this project, I believe this project is technically feasible and would adequately serve the project area's drainage needs. However, the testimony brought to the board by the landowners as to whether the benefits of this project exceed the costs should be given significant consideration in the decision to move forward with this project. Should the current petition be approved to proceed to a final hearing, the petition bond will be returned and detailed plans, specifications, estimated costs, and a schedule of assessments will be prepared. Additionally, a benefit versus cost analysis will be performed to further determine the feasibility of advancing this proposed project. Okay, thank you, Dan. Um, questions from the board? I've done it this time. Mr. Lewis? Nope. Yeah, I didn't actually have any others. Um, I know the report is lengthy. And uh, for those of you who have participated in these before, somewhat redundant, but those of you who haven't, it is uh, informative and therefore, and we are required to read the first report into the record. So um, that is it for now, Jennifer, you've got some uh, with no further questions, we can go on to the next phase, and that is uh, 
open for testimony. And Jennifer, I think you've got some <coughs> letters you want to do, acknowledge? We do. We had a few letters turned in as remonstrances against the petition. We had one from John Parrish. We had one from Paul and April Grandemonico. We had one from Jeffrey or Lisa and Jenna Jeffers. And we had one from Herman Burke Jr. And then we had one from Edward Yeager. Um, now, Mr. Yeager kind of on the fence. He wasn't sure if he was yes or no. So right now he's, we're reading him in with the remonstrances. So and that is all I have. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, we acknowledge those then, um, and we have seen those. Um, okay. So now we'll open it up to online testimony. And we have uh, Mr. Brett from the Soil and Water has a comment to make to start the testimony. Yes. Good morning, Commissioners. Brett Bacon, Delaware Soil and Water Conservation District. Uh, if it would please the board, I would uh, respectfully request that uh, as the petitioner, Michelle Thomas, be given the initial opportunity to testify. Um, and I believe her comments may um, influence the other testimony. So. Okay. Commissioner Merrill, any? Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Let's uh, go forward with, <laughs> with she's okay. Uh, Michelle Thomas, you are unmuted. Can you hear us okay? Yes, I can. Okay, great. We can hear you if you want to um, proceed. Oh, I need to swear you in. I will do this for everyone who's going to offer testimony. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Okay, you may proceed. Um, I uh, am the owner of uh, 6754 Harlem Road. It's a property that is uh, 5.33 acres I purchased in 2012. And I suppose everyone uh, that can see or has received the map and I am numbers 21 and 26 on the uh, map that was sent out with the uh, information about this project. Um, the reasons for filing the petition are unable to use the back portion three acres of my property due to subsurface drainage collapse, large blowouts uh, measuring five feet by four feet wide by three feet deep, continued tile breakage visible from the northwest corner of the property to Harlem Road, continuous loss of soil uh, through not repair of the tile. Those blowouts and all the um, um, holes that have, appear, have appeared uh, from the subsurface drainage tile was existent, it was, is existing when I bought the property, unbeknownst to me. It goes, uh, and it, all of this goes against good soil management and soil conservation and soil loss. The surface drainage problem uh, results in seasonal flooding or when we have very heavy rains uh, coming across my property from the uh, road ditch and from the tile underneath Harlem Road uh, that um, drains the surface uh, water from the field across the road on the east side of my property and then across my property ends up in the northwest corner where it ponds. I have to say at this point I've spoken to John Parrish and he has done some repairs and remediation of this problem to allow the water to flow through onto his, uh, through his property. Um, but this subsurf, this surface drainage was going into the subsurface drain tiles, the blowouts causing faster soil erosion. Now I'd like to state why I'm not in favor of the petition. Uh, considering the construction area, the amount of property uh, in the financial burden to a large number of property owners while only be benefiting one property only, owner, mainly me, I cannot in good conscience state that I'm in favor of the petition. And at this point, I would like to add, I would like to thank Brett Bacon and Dan Barr for their patience and help in answering my questions. They're a great team to work with. Okay. 
Um, questions? So I just make sure we understand uh, you're asking that uh, your petition be withdrawn. Yes. Okay. Anything else? Um, um, I mean, thank you for coming forward and to re examining uh, everything and to soil and water too for sounds as though you've answered a lot of questions and, and uh, no, really, really appreciate your, your diligence in this, Melissa. Thank you. Thank you. It'd probably be appropriate if there's anyone else that's supporting the petition. Yeah, exactly. We, we, we do want to, nevertheless, uh, since this is a hearing, and uh, yeah. we do want to open it up for anyone else who wishes to testify either in favor or opposed to the petition. Um, the petitioner being willing to withdraw is obviously strong testimony to not go to the second hearing, but uh, we'll certainly open it up to uh, others who do wish to testify. And how many do we have on the call? We're on the, I'm sorry, seven, okay. So we have six others who have not spoken that are uh, at this point open. We will open all the um, microphones. Oh, we can go one at a time, sure. Ed Yeager. Don't no. have to testify, but we want to give no. you the opportunity. Can you hear me? This is Ed yes. Yeager. Yes, we can hear you. Did you want to testify? Um, actually, I put the testimony in, in a documented form and sent it to Sarah um, earlier this morning, if you will. Yes, and, we did acknowledge you know, that letter that we received, yes, or okay. email. And so um, we put our due diligence into doing the best we could to improve um, our property with the drainage conditions that existed back in the 2012-2013 time frame. Um, so, sir, it sounds like you're getting into testimony, so I'd better swear you in if you, if you want to say, offer additional comments. Um, I would, I would say. I would just leave it as it stands in the documentation, if you will, if that's helpful for the process. Okay, we got that. And, and um, then we'll do our best to uh, support whatever direction it goes. Didn't quite catch that last. I didn't either. Yeah. Uh, whatever the decision is. Um, didn't uh, I tell you what, sir? Let me let me swear you in because it, it could be considered you're you're giving testimony. You solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes. Okay. Now, why don't you? Uh, we couldn't quite understand the last phrase. Maybe if you could stand closer to the micro or just sit closer to the microphone, we might be able to understand it better. Yes. If indeed the the project. Uh, was approved and went forward, we would be in favor of it, if you will. Um, there is a, a circumstance, though, where a lot of the work and investment we have already made, if you will, actually, the term that was used is tiled away from the pith or watershed to uh, another uh, direction, okay? And so we would want relief uh, from an assessment point of view for the work we've already done and investment we've made to improve the drainage on our property as well as not put more pressure on, on the pith or watershed. Is that, is that understandable? And, and uh, do you have any questions about that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah we, under we understand. I and mean, again, we did get your letter earlier, so. All right. Um, okay. Anything else, sir? Um, that's it. Thank you for okay. the support. Okay. Thank you. We'll go on to the next one, then, sir. JD. It's yeah, I'm the property owner of 6498 Harlem Road. I'm the guy at the bottom of this funnel. So, I guess the first thing I want to mention is two of my parcels that I have listed. If it's been in the family since 127 years ago. Okay, let, uh, I better stop you, sir, and swear you in. Sounds like you want to uh, give All a right, that's fine. testimony. Do you solemnly swear a testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. I do. Okay, you can proceed. 
All right, so this property has been in my family since uh, 1893. I'm sorry, if you could identify your, your name and then parcel number, okay. if you can find it. Jeffrey D. Hughes. So I've got a property in, that was recently divided up in three different parcels. Uh, number 24, number 14, and 15. Okay. Two of those parcels, 24 and uh, 14, run directly to the back of my property and don't even, I, I just, against being assessed any money for those properties that don't, they don't even feed into this uh, system. Um, my biggest concern is I get the water anyway, it's coming. The question is how many feet per second is it coming? If we increase the feet per second, then I've got more erosion on my property. Also, this approximate proposed center lines, I'm assuming that's a uh, conduit you're gonna put in. Uh, if you know the back of my property, it's a ravine back there. There's no, it's not necessary to put that type of conduit back there. It flows freely. I guess that's all I've got to say. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, sir. We'll go on to the next one then. Nancy McCorkle. Good morning, uh, commissioners. Can morning. you hear me now? I had to unmute. Yes. yes. Um, we, we I'm, property, I'm property number two on the map. Number two, okay. And I'm not going to testify. I just have a logistics question. Okay. Uh, in 2012, 12 acres of that property was sold. And I've asked because it doesn't indicate so on the map. When I go to the auditor site, to look at their map, it is correct and current. So my question is, were the, those new landowners notified of this hearing? And maybe it doesn't matter since it's going to be withdrawn or uh, proposed to be withdrawn, but um, th the comment that I got back is that it will shake out in the end, but I think they need to be notified now. Okay. Question for, I don't know, Jennifer or Eric? So that's my only comment. Thank you. Okay. Typically when we do the first hearing notifications, we go out a little bit further than what it actually ends up being in the end, should we proceed. And this is not dismissed today. Um, And maybe, or okay. maybe Brett Bacon could comment on. Yeah, when we generate the mailing list for the projects, all of these projects, we use the county auditor's data. Um, that was the, uh, when we generated the list, that was the most current set of data. Perhaps it's been corrected since then, but that's, that's the source of the data and that's the only data we have to pull from, so. So anybody with a listed by the auditor as a parcel owner would have received notification. Correct. And and if the, the auditor's data was not current or correct, I'm, and I'm not saying that it was or wasn't, we would not have had um, any knowledge to notify somebody. So. Okay. okay. Sure. Thank you. Staff attorney has a comment apparently. Sure. Uh, Eric Hostetler, staff attorney. Uh, the other issue is uh, notification for these projects is given by letter, but also by publication and by statute, the publication is your fail safe and people are deemed sure. to have been notified. So there's no question as to jurisdiction, your ability to proceed today. Okay. okay. Very good, thank you. Good, good point. Um, okay, and that's it then? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. We'll move on to the next one then, sir. Lisa? Lisa? Just listed as Lisa? Um, yes, this is um, Janella Jeffers, um, 6613 Harlem. Plot number five on the map, and five, okay. the statement was read out before because I faxed it in. I'm against the petition. Thank okay. you. We did get your letter and acknowledge that, so thank you. Next one, Sarah. Um, R. Sant. R. Sant. Yes. R. Sant. Uh, R. Sant. Maybe muted yourself on your own. Hello, this is Roger Antelik. Roger Antelik, okay. 
Okay. okay. Uh, I don't know where we got that other initials, but uh, did you wish to testify, sir? Yes. Okay, let me swear you in. You sound me swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, I do. Okay, you may proceed. Uh, first of all, I at 7009 Harlem Road, which is number nine on the map, number okay. eight on the map. Number eight. Uh, okay. I'd like to thank Michelle for withdrawing this. Uh, I'm, I guess I had a couple questions that may not be pertinent now, but they might as well go on the record. Uh, one is, if I have a drain tile go bad on my property, I'm responsible for fixing it. So why should other taxpayers be responsible when there's a drain tile go bad on somebody else's property? Now, I could understand it if we had a road flooding problem, but I've lived here for 44 years and I don't ever remember water running across the road. So it's not a overall issue like that. Uh, the third point is where my property is located, I'm actually over the crown of the road and my drainage all runs to the south. So I wouldn't see how this would be applying to our property. So that's all I had. Okay. All right, thank you, sir. Um, any questions? Okay. Next one. Last one is just a phone number. We don't have a name. And that is 614-891-4233. All right, let's repeat that, sir. Give them one more chance. They may be muted as well. 614. 891-4233. Okay, again, don't have to testify, but just wanted to make sure everybody had a chance. Um, okay, well, we will uh, uh, end the testimony portion of this then. Uh, unless additional questions from the board? No, and I think because the petitioner's request had been withdrawn, I see no reason to continue. I would, first of all, we need to close the hearing. Yep. Move to read the motion to close the hearing. Resolution number 20 825 in the matter of closing the public hearing for consideration of the PIPR number 377 drainage improvement petition. So moved. Second. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 20 825. <laughs> Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Okay. I would direct the clerk to read the, um, to dismiss, dismiss the petition, please. Resolution number 20 826. In the matter of the commissioners dismissing the PIPR number 377 drainage improvement petition, Sorry. would you like to state a reason why? Cost exceeds benefits, project is not necessary, or project is not conducive to public warfare? Uh, not necessary. I guess probably the first two, cost exceeds the benefit, project not necessary. And that is motioned by Mr. Merrill. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 20-826. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Resolution number 20-827, in the matter of approving that the cost incurred by the county engineer in making preliminary reports for the PITHER number 377 drainage improvement petition be paid for from the bond of the petitioners. So moved. Second. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 20-827, Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Okay, well the hearing is closed. Um, we've dismissed the petition, and um, that is it for this for this for the Pither Drainage Petition yes, Project. That so is it for that the is, hearing. That is concluded. Yes. I want to thank everyone for for participating, and uh, uh, we in, the the process went pretty smoothly. So I want again want to thank everyone. Um, okay, that is it for the the Pither. Uh, drainage petition program. We just we do not have need for executive session. We do. We'll watch. Uh, we do. Um.
Dawn has. Um, oh, yes. okay. we got so, that. Um, and then I did not know if the board had any commissioner comment. Yeah, we'll open it up for administrator and commissioner comments.